I'm glad but you found speaking out. Speaking of the complicated relations of families and daddies, the yes. Raven Theater is presenting the world premiere of Sycamore by Sarah Sander, which is a poignant and funny examination of sibling rivalry and sexual and gender identity. And joining us right now are two of the stars of the show, Jocelyn Gonzalez and Julian Lerich. Yes, did I get their name right? Yes. yes. Right, awesome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yay. And for our radio uh, oh, listeners, yeah. they're both adorable. Can I just say that? Oh, thank you. Really cute, really yes, handsome, yeah, and no, really beautiful. But, really be- so so just keep picturing that. Yeah, if you can't guys? make it down to the to the flower show today, go to see Raven yeah. Theater Sycamore. You'll see beautiful things on stage as well. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Both physically and beautiful. I, I saw the show yesterday. Uh, How did you make it? It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's, yeah, it, mm-hmm. I, I was not expecting it to g- go to some of the places that I went, and it was a, like kind of a crazy ride. Yeah. And this is a world premiere for you. What was the rehearsal process like yeah. so <laughs> yeah i mean the rehearsal process um it was it was very interesting because yeah it's the world premiere so the script was being changed throughout the process and um throughout the previews oh, so you were working with the playwright directly. yes oh yeah, how yeah. exciting yeah it was yeah. very cool um and she's the greatest um she was so sweet and extremely supportive of our character choices um and yeah, so every time we would work through a scene, um, the player would see what was what was needed to improve the dynamics between between the characters, and and how to really dig deeper with um, who each one was and what they were dealing with. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, my experience, uh, this being my first like big play role, mm-hmm. um, with Devin DeMaio, who's an amazing director. She took us through a few levels of finding our characters, like analyzing um, our behaviors and our relationships. Um, and that was something that I, I wasn't even sure how I was going to come about with the role of Jocelyn. Um, but she took us, again, through this emotional roller coaster and, you know, finding out where are we in, in this lonely world? Because yeah. we're all kind of lonely characters in a way, but we all somewhat share the same feelings, just different perspectives on our life. Yeah, that was the thing that really struck me. That's a great way to put that, that everybody is, it's a very lonely play. It really mm-hmm. is. Like, surprisingly, I was like, oh, so, oh. So I haven't uh, seen it yet. What? How do your two characters relate to each other? Can we say that without spoiling anything? I'm his yeah. neighbor. Okay. And mm-hmm. I have a son, uh, Jonathan. And they go to school together. Yeah. And then, do you want to tell her? Yeah, so, um, the, um, Jasleen's, um, character in the show, um, Jocelyn and her son, Jonathan, they just moved from, um, Los Angeles. Right, we moved from Los Angeles. Yeah, so they're new. Um, and my character, Henry, um, takes on this fascination with Jonathan, uh, and as does your sister in the play. As does my so sister. So don't, don't, don't enter the sibling rivalry there. Okay. Oh, a very it's fun rivalry. Yeah, it is, right? yeah. So, and like, you know, I was sitting here thinking as it was, you know, got the press release and all this stuff going, oh, okay, this will be really interesting. But then it kind of goes a notch deeper. So now we're yes. dealing with problems with addiction and mm-hmm. problems with the depression and other sorts of yeah. big issues that I'm not, I'm not going to talk about all of them. <laughs> don't give spoiler. it away. Not giving away yeah. everything. But it really is a, a kind of... Uh, it really, yeah, it goes to a deeper level. So yeah. how, how does it feel? How have audiences been reacting to it? We've had interesting audiences. I think every night is different. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. That's the best part about theater. Yeah. <laughs> and the tomatoes are a big hit. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> there are tomatoes through the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So All there's right. a lot of tomatoes going on. Um it's we we haven't really sat down with every audience, but we did have a um, talk back with um, a few uh, people that were there, and they were very interested in like my relationship with Louise, who is my my neighbor. Um, how where did my son come from with you know being a, wanting to travel around the world and becoming a photographer? Because I'm into sculptures and I love being uh, I'm an artist as well. Um, I mean, I think these are relatable things, but you're also curious because I'm divorced three times. <laughs> I Just love my three. wife. Right, yeah. And it's like, how does she manage? How does she still, you know, how is she still functional sure. in mm-hmm. this life? So, 
I think that's that was that created a conversation. And how does she yeah. look so young to be married? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Big question. Of the Trust show. me, Lou, uh, Jocelyn wears way more makeup than I do on an average day. <laughs> and so age you'll, you. Okay. You, yeah, that'll age me. Okay. Trust well, me. That's better than the other one. I smear my eyeliner, all of that good stuff. <laughs> if you are just joining us, we are speaking with Jocelyn Gonzalez and Julian Larich. They are two stars, two of the stars of Sycamore, now running at the Raven Theater uh, in Edgewater. Uh, you should really go check. Check it out. Uh, yes, I'm trying not to be a geek right now, but if Jocelyn's voice sounds familiar and you are a gay man of a certain age, it's because she's the winner of America's Next Top Model Cycle 8, and I'm a total geek. And oh, I, I love you, Scott. No, no, oh. no, no, no. I'm tell- I was saying this off the air. We were rooting for you in Cycle 7. You didn't make it on the show, and then you showed back up in Cycle 8. We're like, what? You she are, means it. You are a true fan when you know my story about Cycle 7. I do. You know you that. You were back, so that sad, and you're like, I'm coming back. back. Yes. I'm coming back. <laughs> and there you you came back, and you came back to win the whole thing. It's mm-hmm. just, and you've had such an interesting career. What do you, what did you, what was the big takeaway from that whole experience? Because it's got to be just like, oh, it was life changing. Yeah. Oh my God, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the experience of alone on top motto i was able to discover a lot of inner strength a lot of inner beauty because it was highly competitive as you saw on the show and it was one of those times where we weren't being really manipulated with with what we were saying you know it was really pretty real and we all were sharks so um we all were sharks that's how i like to call them the girls were very competitive and i was very intimidated by that but um again so that's why i had to find um you know this inner strength and perseverance has been the key to my success living in new york city living one of the best times of my life you know having billboards in times square about four of them cover girl magazines you know cover of magazines living my dream and mm-hmm. you're from the you're from Chicago originally, absolutely from the I'm northwest original. side, right? Yes, Which Humble is where Park. We're, where we're, oh, wonder. Mm-hmm. And I think, if I recall, in all uh, disclosure, I I'm not a uh, I don't watch the show, but <laughs> I think you got a lot of press when you won here in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I did. I remember reading about you, and even yeah. though I I didn't I wasn't a fan of the show, I'm like I was so proud of Hometown you. Hometown girl, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, Chicago has always been a place where they welcome me with open arms and have shown ex- so much love and, and so much love. Do you? have you know this play is about sibling rivalry do you have siblings that you've had sibling rivalry with um, or do we all or is well, that you know i can tell you something the irony of my life is it's so funny because i did i do have an aunt that's one week older than me and we were raised like twins mm-hmm. and she was the all girl american beauty mm-hmm. and they always had us competing in pageants but she will always win so I felt like a total loser. I was always a tall and skinny girl, string bean, palm tree. Every nickname you could imagine was thrown at me. But I felt um, that they prepared me to win. There you go. And I win and I signed myself for a top model and I ended up bi- winning the biggest beauty competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? right. <laughs> so I, I feel like See? there's a big irony in there. But we, yeah, we were rivals. You know, it was always competition. And how are you? How, about, how are you? How is she with you today? Oh, after? she's my, my family is amazing. And she's the biggest fan, fans. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. great to hear. And how about you, Julian? Do you, have, do you have any siblings? I have a twin brother, oh. actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Twins aren't rivals, though. They're like the that. same person. Oh, man. Right? I don't no. know about no, that. I don't know about that, yeah. Um, what, maybe identical twins? Who knows? Yes, but, I was thinking about identical. Yeah, ones, we're actually. fraternal in okay, like that's different. such different ways. Thank, unlike Henry um, in the show, who you know um, has a crush on the guy that his sister also has a crush on. Thankfully, I'm gay and my brother's straight, so we've never had that deal. <laughs> so we, Whew, we can God. have yeah separate love interests. <laughs> that has not been a conflict, but um. Yeah, we um, we did get into some very fun fights <laughs> yeah. when we were younger. That's part of being a sibling. Exactly. Yeah. Do you guys grow. know Julian's Honduran? As no. Well. Oh. Yeah. I thought his brother looks more Spanish. Actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. My exactly. My dad's from Honduras, um, but I look like this all American <laughs> white boy. But my brother um, <laughs> got a lot of the genes from my dad's side of the family, so mm-hmm. we do not look at alike all. at all. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. Has yeah. he come to see the show? He did. He came to see it. What did he think? He loved it. Um, yeah, he said he he cried um, at points in the show Aww. and that he wanted to reach out to me, which is super sweet. Because I know that five years ago he would have been like, "Ha ha, Julian! Like I want to see you cry." <laughs> um, he's maturing. He's maturing, yeah. and I can see that, that. Yeah, from the experience, I saw how our relationship had developed, and we're we're like best friends now. There you go. Yeah, That's it's great. great. So a good sibling rivalry turned into you know a good mm-hmm. relationship, exactly, much like the play.
Are you? Yeah, do exactly. you live in Chicago as well? Yeah, I am um, a student at Northwestern okay. University. Yeah, go Cats! Go Cats! That's me. I, I, I too. <laughs> and we were talking about Don Mora. Big ass shout out to Don. Mora. Oh yeah, Don Mora. Thank yes. you for teaching me everything I know. There you go. <laughs> I was rooting for your cats in the NCAA. I don't, I don't know. You don't know anything about Sports that. But they I were am. playing basketball about a week ago. But. Were they in their purple costumes or what? What color were their white costumes? White and purple. All oh, right, there we are. See sports. I oh think. man, I wish. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wish I knew. I don't yeah. know sports either. <laughs> yeah, there that's what I mean. That's my role here. Yeah, no. As we role. get the lesbian <laughs> here, so she gets to do the sports. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. It's crazy. It's madness yeah, around it here. It's March madness. Do you know that at least? <laughs> See, look, I know the term. I know the terms. And everything. No, but you need to tell Dawn Mora mm-hmm. that uh, I was her Agamemnon in a production of Iphigenia. Oh, God. That's oh, theater no. talk. For all those that don't know I what he's talking her. about. Tell her that. Tell, yeah, I, I love her. I mean, it was one of the best experiences. If you get a chance to work with her, if she's directing, oh, audition yeah. for her play. <laughs> Dude, it's great. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just totally sidetracked everything. One last uh, couple of questions. Uh, yes. when, what is the one thing that you hope audiences will take away after they go see Sycamore at the Raven Theater? Um, okay, so that's funny because I, when I went to church today, my me- the message was all about models and how a lot of people like to use them as idols, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he obviously had a biblical um, reference as well, but what he was saying is, um, like, even the biblical figures as well had their own problems. Um, and models are not, as, as though they seem so perfect, they're still not perfect. And I think um, what I took from the message is, like, to don't compare yourself to anyone. You know, just be yourself. And um, I think that my perception about um, <clears throat> my neighbors like Louise and her family is like they are p- picture perfect family, but they're really not. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think this is just a, a message for all of us that no one is ever perfect. You know, Amen. no matter, yeah, yeah, no yeah, matter yeah. what, you know, and we all have our problems. And obviously, the message is that you can rely on God to, you know, help you persevere through. You know? Yeah, and I also think that. With Henry um, being a character who's questioning his uh, gender throughout the show, I think it really shows um, the audience that people are always questioning who they are. It doesn't always have to be about gender specifically, but even with the parents in the show, they're they're changing. Their lives are continually being formed by the experiences that are happening and have happened. So not... I think I want... I think the audience should take away the concept that nothing is ever stable and that you kind of have to go along with the flow and you will, your identity is, is constantly being changed by the events taking place in your life. That's um, a great lesson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, then run and don't walk to see Sycamore by Sarah Sander, which is now playing at the Raven Theater through April 29th. For more information, you can head to raventheater.com, and that's theater with an R-E. Because, you know, we're fancy that yeah. way. Uh, or you can head over to our Facebook page. We're going to have a link up there as well. Uh, one last thing uh, for you, Jocelyn. Yes, darling. What does Tyra smell like? <gasps> I never got a scent. Oh, you're kidding me? <laughs> oh it my seems God, like so... it would be like Wait, cocoa I, butter and I, peaches. I, like, no. I just wanted to like, be, oh. No, she's a sense of business. Oh. Okay. All there right. Go. There, yeah. we go. There, there we go. go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Well, tell her I said hi. I'm sure she's on speed dial. Uh, <laughs> again, go see Sycamore by Sarah Sander at the Raven theater through uh april 29th i want to thank jocelyn gonzalez and julian large thank you so much and thank congratulations you. on a beautiful show thank you so much